Hi, my name is Phil, I'll talk about politics. In this video I'd like to discuss the uh, recently circulated government documents detailing the plans for lorries in the UK to need special permission from customs to take goods not only across the Brexit border to the EU but also across the Brexit border to, well, other parts of the UK. And this is going to be one of those things that the government will either have to drop last minute by the sounds of it or which will of course further crush their credibility or stick with generating chaos for hauliers. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So that lorries would need a lot of extra paperwork to move goods from the UK to the EU after the transition period ends should be news to nobody right now. But details from the government on how haulage firms, firms sorry, were supposed to do this had been a bit sketchy at best. But there has now been reports of government documents from Her Majesty's Customs and Revenue, otherwise known as HMRC, that says lorry drivers will need a reference from their new system called the Goods Vehicle Movement Service. Now, in fact, details of the much extra bureaucracy required of lorry drivers have now been released by the government and industry insiders do not seem to be looking forward to it. It involves three types of paperwork for triple fun times. And for the avoidance of doubt, this applies to goods being taken from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, as well as into the EU directly, dispelling once and for all the lies that Boris Johnson told about no paperwork applying to this trade. But it uses a new IT system that I talked about a little while ago. So I've talked about this relatively recently, I think. Uh, that isn't up and running. So when I talk about a new IT system, it's so new it doesn't actually exist. And according to industry experts, can't possibly be actually in existence. It's certainly not fully operational by the end of the year due to time constraints. There's just not enough time. So the lorry firms will need to use a system that does not yet even exist. And, and there's no way, therefore, a firm has been able to train in its use. And the document says that any lorry that hasn't filed their paperwork on this system, this currently mythical system, will be blocked before reaching the port. Presumably to cut down on queues that we don't have room for. Although, you know, the report does note that there doesn't seem to be a plan in the document for how lorries will actually be stopped. In other words, how are they going to stop the lorries getting to the port? Um, I mean, it may be that it just doesn't need policing. After all, why go to the expense of sending a lorry to a port if it wouldn't be able to pass through anyway? But this doesn't really solve the main problem, does it? Because I mean, sure, if you have lots of lorries queuing up without the proper paperwork, obviously it's gonna create massive delays for those who do, potentially by days, according to those who work in the industry. So absolutely, yeah, make sure that lorries know that they're only gonna get through if they've got this in place and then stay away if you haven't and then you get the others through in as timely a manner as possible. But because to be able to pass through, you're going to need to use a system that doesn't exist at the moment. You have to wonder just how many haulage firms are going to be caught out. Smaller firms, for example, were already going to be up against it. I mean, they were the, before any details emerged a long time ago, years ago, in fact, as soon as it became clear that the government was heading towards a no deal Brexit, you know, they were trying to explain they can't just hire more staff to take on the extra bureaucracy and they can't do the extra bureaucracy themselves as well but for all firms before they can use the system they will need some training or at least guidance from the government and, and as for those smaller firms who may have to contract out this work they may have to use a logistics company to be able to do the paperwork for them at a much extra expense of course you know those those firms can't really do anything until they have been fully trained as well which means they need the working system to be working so they can practice on it. And also, before they can get certificated for this new system, the new system, you know, obviously has to exist. But when will it? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember the government saying something about September. Now, if it's at the start of September, that leaves four months to get on with it. If it's towards the end of September, that would leave three months to become familiar with it and go through the certification process. Because it's not just like each time you're gonna go across the border, you need to have these three types of paperwork logged onto it, because it's electronic, although you'll also have a physical copy of one of the pieces of paperwork in the lorry as well. You, you need to become certified by HMRC. 
Now, if we have no confidence that the system will actually be working in September, even if something pretending to be the system goes online, it might end up being like I was thinking, you know, like the tracing program, the COVID tracing program. They announced it to great fanfare. Oh, it's up and running, it's up and running, you know, but then it crashed uh, and then it failed to work for most people. And then in the following weeks, it actually got worse. And, and that's not just me bashing the government about something that hasn't even happened yet. You know, recall that I said industry experts. The people actually working on this project are saying that this isn't going to be ready by the end of the year. Are you having a laugh? So if the people actually working on it are saying that, yeah, okay. But something will be up, almost certainly. Something will be up because the government will look silly if it's not. So you will then see haulage firms trying to get on it, registering, all the rest of it. But what then? You know, I mean, we know what then. It will crash. Data will be lost. Personal data may even be accidentally emailed out to someone it shouldn't be. And all the time, the clock will be ticking towards Brexit. And what about staff at HMRC that are going to have to deal with this? I was wondering if more staff had been recruited to deal with processing the registrations. You know, given that lorry drivers can't leave the country without HMRC saying so, they have to certify them as saying, yeah, you can do this. Um, so you need extra staff to deal with that on top of everything else, don't you? Now, I couldn't find any evidence of this, though absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. But whilst I was trying to find out about it, I did come across another interesting report on this IT system. It's been reported in, in different places from different angles. But this time in the right wing Telegraph, which is, uh, you know, pro-Brexit, just to, to point out there. And this quoted the head of the government's customs panel describing the handling of the IT that is supposed to make Brexit customs work as amateurish. Amateurish, it was described as. And just as with COVID measures, we're massively behind the curve. France, for example, because obviously countries neighbouring us are going to need systems in place. France, you know, gets the, the most trade directly from the UK going through. And they have a system all set up and tested. Ours doesn't even exist. So it's easy to see why those involved would have their heads in their hands right now. The Telegraph also quoted someone else as saying that businesses were already working out alternative routes in order to bypass British ports altogether after Brexit. Naturally, of course, this means less business at our service stops and other similar businesses. Nice one, Boris. Even more job losses incoming. And they went on to say that the system that haulage firms are expected to use has been devised by someone without any thought for how things work in the real world. Now, that was interesting because up until this point, I was aware that there wasn't enough time to develop the system to be fully operational by the end of the year. Um, you know, I'd known that. But this is something else. So what this is suggesting now is that the system that's been developed, it's not just that there isn't enough time to get it by the end of the year. It's, it's been developed poorly. It's, as, as the person saying, it's been devised by someone who has no idea how things work in the real world. And what they will mean, of course, is the real world of haulage. And this is why whenever I sort of reading any reports on anything related to the borders, the first thing I want to do is find out what do the people who work in haulage actually think of it? Because these are the guys who know. And uh, as well as exporters and importers. And... You know, what this is saying is, never mind the time, at the end of this process, you have got something that doesn't work. And this, again, brings me in mind to the COVID tracing app. We were told in April that the government's plan, you know, giving this money to one of Dominic Cummings' drinking buddies to develop this app, wasn't going to work. The whole, the fundamental basis of it couldn't work. They've now abandoned it because they've realised this. Months after the rest of us were told. Months after they were told and ignored it. Sounds like the same things applying here. It sounds exactly like the same thing. So this system, if that's the case, is never going to come online, ever. Because they'll have to abandon it and go for something else. And absolutely, you know, this, this absolutely sounds like the modus operandum of Cummings, Gove and Johnson, doesn't it? Now, of course, you know, not necessarily breaking news about the alternative routes, you know, businesses trying to sort of circumvent us. 
Um, you know, I was talking a, a year ago about how Ireland, France and the Netherlands were all working out, um, expecting sort of different flows of traffic through them uh, as people would seek to do this amongst the uncertainty. But then there was a really, really interesting quote in this Telegraph article because it echoes my own thoughts. And, and it's really one for another video, but I'm just going to end it here. And the quote was this, and it was from the chief executive of the Road Haulage Association. And it says, it's a shambles because they're hoping there will be a free trade agreement, but last minute won't work. So what they're saying is, even if there were a last minute deal, it's not going to help the haulage firms because they can't change things overnight. And that feeds into my calculations of what Boris Johnson actually intends. And it is suggestive that Boris Johnson actually intends for there to be some sort of deal right at the last minute. And it might explain why we're not putting in serious efforts to preparing for the no deal in the way that other countries, including France, have done. But that is really a whole other topic, which may come out later this today or this week. But anyway, there it is on the uh, the latest on haulage. Let's uh, let's hope that uh, something positive comes out of it at some point. Now that this has gone public, hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.